Silly. College football. Another week has ended. Another week has subsided. Another week has given us more clarity in the college football playoff race. And once again, you know, we start, you know, our week off with like so. Kansas State, how you doing, buddy? You laid a goose egg. Will Howard threw three interceptions against West Virginia. You get blown out. You lose your opportunity. It's okay, though, because there's something else that's going to happen later that's going to jeopardize the Big 12's chances at a playoff spot. What about Coastal Carolina? They put up 51 points and shut out Georgia State. Good job by them, honestly. What about Georgia? Georgia offense is kind of anemic. It, you know, it wasn't, you know, Georgia's offense always hasn't been the greatest. But this week, they just had to prove their defensive might against Kentucky, and that's all they needed to do. That's all they needed to do. Kansas You know, they got blown up by Iowa State. I don't even care. Desmond Ritter and that Cincinnati defense laid the smack down on Memphis. Laid the smack down. Cincinnati's going to move on up. They're going to move on up this week. I can tell you that right now. What a damn good team that is. If you can't, if you, I mean, don't don't think it's just the quarterback. They got weapons in the backfield as well. Don't think it's just Desmond Ritter. They got they got weapons in the backfield as well. Um, you know, Dotes. You know, he's a he's a pretty interesting running back there. You know, and of course, you know they they got some receivers, but they're they're not really name worthy right now. Um, as far as that goes, but they shut Memphis down. Brady White didn't do anything. You know, the whole Memphis offense that runs, you know, like 80 plays a game, they didn't get to do that this week. So, none of that. None of that. What about Joe Milton and Michigan? Well, boys, <laughs> it's already over. Michigan's playoff hopes are pretty much dead in the water already. Poor John. Poor Jim Harbaugh, not John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh is the better brother. Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> Joe Milton did not play well. If you throw it 50 times, don't throw a touchdown. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, Joe Milton threw for 300 yards, and he didn't throw for anything. He didn't do anything out there. Instead, it was Ricky White doing great things for Michigan State. Had nearly 200 yards on his own. Rocky Lombardi, he was pretty much under 50% passing the entire game until, you know, very late. And then he went over 50% passing. But he passed the first three touchdowns, 300 yards. Michigan, Michigan, oh, you've, you've lost to the Spartans again. And it was in thrilling fashion, too, to be completely... Well, it wasn't in thrilling fashion. They were already pretty much dead in the water after Michigan State dominated the game. You know, jet sweeps as well. Michigan State ran that a lot. They ran the jet sweep a lot. And they just kept... They just kept Milton contained, you know. We couldn't let him get these open receivers and stuff like that. They jammed up, you know, these big... Plays that happened, you know, last week against Minnesota, you know, big plays. They 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 covered well. They did what they needed to do in the run game, and Michigan State walks out their first victory of the season. Congratulations to them! Congratulations to them! Well, there's a new sheriff in town for the number one Clemson Tigers right now. It's DJ Hui Wakalele. Um, because Trevor Lawrence is not only out for Boston College, but he's out for Notre Dame. He's he got COVID. Speaking of teams, and speaking of COVID, Wisconsin got ravaged by COVID, so they're not playing. They're probably not going to play for another three weeks. If we're being completely honest, Paul Christ got it, and Graham Mertz, the quarterback, who's like now. Wisconsin's down to like their four string quarterbacks. They're not playing Nebraska. Nebraska was like, hey, let's play Chattanooga. 
Big Ten said, no, we're not doing that around here. But anyway, back to Clemson and back to Notre Dame, who beat up on Georgia Tech. I mean, just dominant performance by Notre Dame. I mean, Georgia Tech had like 60 yards of offense in the first half, so it wasn't even of any concern to me. But anyway, Boston College had a 28-10 lead and blew it to Clemson, you know. Travis Etienne got the work in the second half. Now he's the ACC's all-time rushing leader. Um, and Clemson walks away, but they got a little bit exposed. You know, their defense got a little bit exposed right there. It ain't looking too good. And, you know... If Notre Dame can dominate a game, you know, it's looking pretty interesting next week. It's looking a lot more interesting now next week. Anyway, Rutgers is back to normal, so they got beat up on by Indiana. They're back to normal. They, it's okay. Even though there was a play in that game, you know, that looked very, very interesting. But, yeah. Um... What about those Boise State Broncos? They beat up on – well, they didn't really beat up on Air Force. It was a back-and-forth game. Hey, did you know Jack Sears transferred to Boise State? I didn't know this. Um, yeah, he was at USC for a little bit and then didn't even play last year. And now he's over at Boise State taking over for Hank Brockmeyer for probably a week or two because he didn't make the trip to Air Force. Let's not even talk about how the Air Raid didn't put up any points against, you know, Alabama and SMU. Pretty much beat up on Navy. Yeah, Navy scored a lot of points that game, but, uh, you know, it really wasn't anything special. Okay, Oklahoma State, Texas. Spencer Sanders threw for 400 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. We, we kept Shuba Hunter. We kept Shuba Hubbard under 100 yards. I know, right? But we couldn't stop Tyron Wallace. Couldn't stop him. But what did we do? What what did the Longhorns do? Force turnovers. Force turnovers. Sack Spencer Sanders at the right time when we needed it. What did this offense do? Get the plays they needed at the right time when they needed to. Big plays. Overshone. Joseph Osai, you guys did a great job in this game for the Longhorns on defense. I was pleasantly surprised. At Oklahoma State, you are no longer unbeaten. You lost in overtime to the Longhorns, you know, a team that's been underachieving for several years now. You lost. And guess what? The Big 12's playoff hopes kiss that goodbye. You can kiss that goodbye because most of the conference has two losses already. Not just the conference play, but out of conference as well. You can kiss the playoff hopes. Pretty much done. It's in the coffin. Oklahoma State may lose another game, to be completely honest. You know? But Oklahoma State does have a big game against Kansas State next week. But um, it, it's... it's but it's, you know, that game has a lot less value now than what it did, you know, when I talked about it last week. So, uh, meanwhile, 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 Florida, they beat Missouri, and, you know, I thought the Texas A&M Arkansas game would be pretty interesting, but it was not. It was not at all. Not very interesting at all. You know, um, yeah, sure, you know, Arkansas scored some points late and stuff like that, but that, that really means absolutely nothing. Um, Virginia, I was very surprised they got the upset over North Carolina. We thought, you know, North Carolina was, you know, something elite this year. We thought, we, you know, we could see something different in the ACC, but apparently not because, you know, North Carolina has two losses now. You can kiss those playoff hopes goodbye as well. Kiss them goodbye. Um, Oklahoma beat up on Texas Tech. It really wasn't even close. I mean, come on now. It's Texas Tech. They're not very good. 
not a good team at all. BYU, you know, they have a big matchup next Friday night. Uh, they looked pretty damn good, you know, once again for about a few minutes that I saw them because they were already up 20 with a three, you know, by the time I turned the game off and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, it's 21 to three. We're done talking about this game. We're done. We're done. But real big game of the night was Ohio State, Penn State. How, you know, Penn State doesn't have, you know, everybody there, you know, for the whiteout and stuff like that. But it's okay. It didn't even matter. It was not even close. Ohio State's defense was suffocating. Suffocating defense. Justin Fields can make anything happen. You know, anything looks good for Justin Fields out there, man. That guy can throw a ball, you know. He made a he made a beautiful throw late in the game. Like it was just pretty, you know. Ohio State basically dominated this game. The score is a lot closer than this, you know, game indicated because it was not close, not close at all. Sean Clifford was pressured. James Franklin couldn't call, you know, a game that could exploit something on Ohio State. And if you don't exploit something on Ohio State, you're gonna lose. You gotta, you gotta exploit something. You, you can't, you can't just go around and not do anything about it. You gotta do something. So Ohio State easily handles Penn State. Penn State already has two losses. Michigan already has a loss. So it looks like Ohio State is going to be the front runner in this conference, unless you know somehow Ohio State loses. You know, but I think Ohio State is strong enough to where it's like, okay, we can lock a playoff spot already. Because, <laughs> I mean, they've already they've already flexed their muscles in two games. And they have Rutgers next week, so I'm scared for that. <laughs> I am scared for that. You know, they're probably going to put like 70 on Rutgers again. We don't, we don't really want that. But, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. So, the Big 12 out of the playoff race, you know, the top five are flexing their muscles on teams, you know. And now there's a big showdown next week with no Trevor Lawrence, you know, for Notre Dame, who's looking to get some respect because they haven't had respect, you know. And keep your eyes on little old Cincinnati. Keep your eyes on Texas A&M. Keep your eyes on those two teams specifically. Keep your eyes a little bit on BYU, too. Keep your eyes on teams that really haven't had the chances, you know, to get themselves in a position like this. Because Texas A&M has historically choked it away and gone 7-5. and five. BYU overloads their schedule and never gets close. And Cincinnati is in the American Athletic Conference. We already know about what, you know, Know, what the college will playoff committee thinks of the American Athletic Conference when it's really a better conference than the Pac-12, to be completely honest. But yeah, that's going to do it for week nine in college football. Week 10, we start November. And it's going to be a doozy to start November. I can tell you that right now. So that being said, everybody, like, share, comment, subscribe, Click the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.